To recreate this dashboard, we'll create a three-level Sankey chart with gradient paths and add the highlighting functionality so we can hover over a path like this, and it'll call out the category it's coming from, like music, and the category it's going to, like share. We'll also be able to hover over a value in a bar, like share, and see all the paths that come in and out of that bar. And for even more details, we'll build this table and link it to the Sankeys and bars, so we can interact with the visual and see all the details in the table. To create the structure of a Sankey, we first need to duplicate the data that we have. To do this, I have a content consumption data source, and I'm going to drag the same content consumption data source underneath it so I can do a union. This duplicates the amount of rows we have so we can create a smooth curve. And you can see it produce this field called table name, where we either have content consumption or content consumption one, depending on if it was the original data source or the one we unioned. I'll create a new worksheet called Sankey, and I'll pull table name in so we can see the values in table name that split our data sources. And to build the structure, I'm gonna start off with all the formulas that we'll need. And I'll have all of these below if you wanna just copy paste. So I'll start by creating a calculated field for our points. I'll type if the table name equals content consumption, then one, else 49. So this will give us our start point one and our end point 49 for our Sankey. Then using that points field we just created, I'll right click, go to create and choose bins. For the size of the bins, I wanna choose one and all the other settings can stay the same. Creating this bin gives us intermediary points for a smooth curve. Then I'll create another calculated field for our normalized points. And here I'll type index minus 25 in parentheses divided by four. This formula will help us distribute the points evenly along the vertical axis. The next formula will be for the rank one. And this is where we'll include the metric that we want to show in the Sankey. So I'll do the running sum of the sum of the metric, which in this case is the users. And I want to divide that by the total of the sum of the users. And this formula is gonna normalize the values from zero to one to ensure there's a smooth transition between the nodes. But rank one will only be our start point or our source node. So I need to duplicate rank one and I'll call it rank two. This will be our endpoint or our target node. Then I'll create another calculated field for our sigmoid. This is a mathematical function that gives it its S-shaped curve. So I'll do one, divided by one plus e raised to the negative norm points. And now I need to create a calculated field for the curve itself. So in here I'll type rank one plus rank two minus rank one in parentheses times sigmoid in parentheses. And this last calculated field is optional, but this is gonna determine the size of our paths. So if you want lower values to have skinnier paths and higher values to have thicker paths, you can create this size formula. And here I'll type the window average of the sum of our metric, which is users. And I'll remove table names from the rows so we can create the structure of our Sankey. I'll move norm points into the columns. And if you right click and go to compute using, you can see we don't have the options for the bins yet. So I need to move the points bins into the marks. And now I can right click on the norm points and compute using the points bins. Then I'll move curve into the rows. And I'll right click and edit the table calculation. For rank one, I'll choose specific dimensions and add our points bin. And currently we don't have any source or target categories we can add in here. So I'm gonna drag content type into the marks and this will be our source category or the thing on the left-hand side of the Sankey chart. I'll also drag interaction into the marks which will be our target category or the thing on the right-hand side of our Sankey chart. 
And now you can see in our table calculation, it added both content type and interaction. So I'll check both of these off. And the order of these needs to be our source category, our target category, and then the point spin. And next I'll choose our rank two. So I'm gonna do specific dimensions again, and this time I'll do interaction, then content type, then point spin. So for rank two, I switch the order of the source and target category. Next I'll do norm points, and again, specific dimensions, and only check off the point spin. And now we have the structure of a Sankey chart, but it's currently choosing shapes right now, so I'm gonna go to automatic and change it to a line. And I want the point spin to determine the path of the line. You can see the right hand side, it's going up a little bit on the end. So I'm gonna edit the axis for norm points and give it a custom fixed range between negative five and five. For formatting, I'll remove the headers that we no longer need and I'll format the worksheet to remove the grid lines, the zero lines, and the access rulers. So now we're just left with our paths. To make the paths proportionate to the values they represent, I'll bring our size calculated field into the marks and I'll change this from detail to a size. Then I need to right click Go to Compute Using and choose the point spin. And now you can see the width of the path is proportionate to the value that it represents. If you want to make all the paths larger or smaller but still proportionate, just use the size slider in the marks. And I'll add the Sankey chart to a dashboard. I created this background using a rounded corner container, but I have another video for that. I'll hide the title of the Sankey chart and get rid of any legends we have. I chose a black background to demonstrate how to fix a Sankey chart that's on a non-white background. So right click, format, go to shading, and choose none for the worksheet shading. And now you're not limited to what background color you wanna use for a Sankey chart. But we still need to add the bookends that represent our source category and our target category. So I'll create a new worksheet for our source category, which is content type. I'll move content type into the marks and I'll move size into the rows. And I want it not only to be segmented by content type, but I also want the content type to be the label. So that we're left with just the bars, I'll remove the access, I'll make it a little bit bigger, and then I'll format the lines. I'll remove the zero lines and the access rulers. And our target category is gonna be set up the same way, so I'm just gonna duplicate our content type worksheet. And I'll call this one interaction for our target category. And the only thing I need to do here is replace content type with our interaction. Now going back to the dashboard, I'll add these two worksheets to represent our source and target category. And I'll hide the title of the worksheet. And you can see here, we have the same issue we did with the Sankey when we first brought it in. So I'm gonna format these to have no shading for the worksheets. But you can see when I hover over one of these paths, like the one at the top, it's going from tech to view. And those are both the last categories on our bar charts. So I'll go to the Sankey worksheet and I'll right click content type to sort it in descending order. And I'll do the same thing for interaction. And now when I go back to the dashboard, you can see it's flipped the Sankey chart. So now when I hover over that first path, it's going from education to comment which are the first values in our categories. So now the paths correctly flow based on where the values are in the categories. To add another Sankey so that we have three levels, I'll duplicate our Sankey worksheet. And while the first one showed the flow between content type and interaction, this one will show the flow between interaction and outcome. But they'll use the same metric, which is the number of users. And so we still need our interaction field, but I'll replace content type with outcome. 
and this time I'll have interaction be first, then outcome. Then I'll right click on curve and edit the table calculation. I'll uncheck content type and instead check off outcome. And since this one's the flow between interaction and outcome, where interaction is the source category and outcome is the target category, I'll need to reorder these so that's interaction first, then outcome, then our point spin. For rank two, I'll uncheck content type and check off outcome. And for this one, I'll put outcome first, then interaction, then the point spin. And our norm points should just have points been checked off. We already have our interaction sorted properly, but now I need to right click on outcome, go to sort, and choose descending. And now we have our two Sankey worksheets, but we still need our third bar. So I'm going to duplicate our interaction worksheet and call it outcome. And all I need to do here is replace our interaction with our outcome field. And back on the dashboard, I'll add our new Sankey chart and our outcome bar. And it might take some time, but I like to get that second bar as close to the middle as I can. And I also like to get the Sankeys aligned with the bars so that it looks like it's flowing out of the bars. And now that I have it in the positioning I want it to be, I can tell there's something a little bit off with our second bar. This is because our second Sankey chart is in front of the second bar. So I'll go to the Layout tab, and I'll move the Sankey 2 behind all of the bars. To add some color to the Sankeys in the bars, I'll go to the Sankey Worksheet. To create a gradient effect, I'm going to pull Norm Points into the marks. And I'll change it to a color. You could use a continuous gradient like this and just edit the color of the gradient and choose 2. But I don't want any gray in the middle, so instead I'm going to right click and make it discrete. Then I'll edit our discrete colors, and I'll choose a custom color palette. But I have another video for how to load your own custom color palette. I'm not going to be super picky about this, so I'm just going to select a few numbers and choose a different color. If you wanted to get a true gradient, you could load 48 colors that work in a gradient. Or you could load colors that are more similarly related, while these have bigger steps between each color. And for gradients, you can also change the opacity of the colors, but I don't like to do this when using discrete values because you can see the segmentation more. So this is what it looks like against the black background in the dashboard we have. For content type, I'm going to choose a purple color so that it matches our left-hand side of the Sankey. And I want to choose a black border since that's our background. For interaction, I'll choose a green color since that's the right-hand side of our Sankey, and I'll also choose a black border. For Sankey 2, I'm going to pull norm points in again and make it a color. But now if I make it discrete, you can see it picked up the same colors as I had on my first Sankey. So if I change the colors here, it'll change it on my first Sankey as well, since these colors are defined by norm points. So to get a different gradient, I'm going to duplicate our norm point field and I'll call it norm points 2. Then I'll drag that in instead. I'll make it discrete, and I'll compute it using our point spin. And now I can edit the colors of our second Sankey without altering the colors of our first Sankey. So I'll do the same thing here and grab a few values at a time and assign their colors. And the last color I need to change is our outcome bar. So I'm going to choose a purple pink color for this and do a black border. But now when I hover over one of these paths, you can see there's a lot of information in there that we don't need. So I'm gonna go to the Sankey worksheet and I'll click on the tooltip in the marks. I'm gonna delete everything that we don't need in here so that I only have the content type, the interaction, and the size, which represents the values. I'm gonna rearrange this so that I just have the content type field an arrow, and then the interaction. And I don't want to call it size, so I'm just going to delete that part and call it users, which is our metric. 
You could also get a little fancy with it and go copy an arrow symbol from the internet and then just paste it in here. And now the tooltip accurately describes the relationship between the source category and the target category, and it gives us the value of. So I'll do the same exact process for the second Sankey that we have. And now that the tooltip for the paths accurately describes the relationship between these three categories, I want to add highlighting so that I can hover over a path and it will show me the two bars that it belongs to. And I also want to be able to hover over the bar and see all of the paths that come in or out of that bar. To add that functionality, I'm going to go to the dashboard tab at the top and hit actions. I'll add a highlight action. And for the source sheet, I want everything checked off that isn't our background. And same with the target sheet. I want to run the action on hovering, and I want to choose three selected fields, our content type, our interaction, and our outcome. And now you can see when I hover over a path, it shows me the category that it comes from and goes to. And this also works for the bars. So now when I hover over a bar, I can see all the paths that flow in and out of that bar. I'll create a new worksheet for a table that displays metrics. And I'll first pull in all our categories into the rows. So content type, interaction, and outcome. To create a table format with multiple measures, I'll move measure name into the columns and measure values into the marks and I'll change measure values into a text. Then I'll remove all the measure values that I don't want to see and just keep our four additional metrics. And I'll make this a bit wider so we can see everything. This is going to be against a back background, so the first thing I want to do is remove any row banding. Then I want to make the worksheet have no color. For the font, I'll choose white so it stands out against our back background. I'll add our table worksheet to the dashboard. And I'll hide the title. And I want this to fit the width of the view. I'll also make the font a bit bigger so it's easier to read. You can see when I hover over one of the lines in our tables, it turns yellow, and you can't really see the white font against this yellow. And this happens when I hover over the Sankey or the bars as well. To disable the highlighting, I'll go to Dashboard, Actions, and I'll edit our highlight action and uncheck table for both the source and the target sheet. To link the bars and the Sankey charts to the table, I'll add a filter action. Filter actions are based on a field, so I'm going to call this one content type, and I'll check off every worksheet for the source sheets that has content type. So this would be our content type worksheet and our Sankey chart. And for the target sheet, I'll drop down and choose table. I'll have the action run on hovering, and I'll show all values when the selection is cleared. For the selected fields, I'll choose content type. Then I'll add another filter action for interaction, and for this one, I need interaction in both our Sankey and Sankey 2 for the source sheets. I'll drop down and choose our table worksheet for the target sheet. And I'll keep all the settings the same as I have for the other ones, except for the selected fields. This one, I'll choose interaction. And I'll repeat the same process for outcome, where the source sheets are outcome and Sankey 2. And now when I hover over one of the bars or the Sankey charts, it filters the table for whatever values are in there. So we can not only see the number of users through the Sankey chart, but we can see some other metrics through our table below.